In this video, I'm going to show you how to create bins, buckets, or groups, depending on how you want to call them, in Power BI using the group function, and also how to do it using Switch. So with that in mind, let's head over to my Power BI desktop. So the data set I'm going to be using is from Kaggle, but I'm also showing it on screen so you can download it from there. But if you just need the link, it's also in the description below. So once you've loaded in the data set, you want to open up the data set so you can start looking at the data. Now, if we go over here, we can just start viewing what the data looks like and the different areas we could probably use to be able to start doing our bins and our groups. So one thing I'm going to be using is going to be using recommend to create groups based on MPS score where you have promoters, passives, and detractors, depending where the score is between zero and 10. And then for the bins, we're gonna use checkout mileage as this gives us a great scope of numbers to be able to use for our bins. So if we click back, and then what we wanna do is then find out our checkout mileage, which is there. And if you go over to the three dots, you can see you get the option of more options. Click on that, and then down here, you'll see new group. Click on that, and then it will come up the options to be able to start creating bins. Now it's already given a new name. You can call this whatever you want, but I'm just going to leave it as checkout mileage bins. And then within here, you can see group type. We're doing bins for now. When I do the other one, I'm going to select list. It's then telling you which field it's using, the size of the bins, or you can do number of bins. And then you've got your min value, which is two, and then your max value, which is over 47,000. Now, because it's set of size of bins, you can set the size of the bins of how they would look, or you can actually change it so you can do number of bins instead. So at this point in time, it's splitting into 23 different bins. And it tells you that if you were to do it by 23, this means the size of each bin will be 2067. Now, if we would change this to say 30, we then get 15,084.7 miles as our bins. And then when you think about how you want the number of bins to be, is if you're gonna make sort of a histogram style chart, you don't want too many bins because otherwise it will get quite wide on the graph. But at the same time, you wanna be able to kind of zone into sort of the key area. So I think 30 is probably okay for now. So let's just stick with 30 and then do okay. And then we've get our new column over here. Now, if we go back to our table, we can see a whole new column has been created based on the bins and it's created it based on the size between one to another. If you click on it, you can't see any DAX that's been created to create this. There is DAX behind it, but it's actually hidden from you unless you're using Tablet Editor where you can see how it's created. So if we were to go back and then if we were just to say, let's put in a bar chart and then we just stick in our, our mileage like so. I'm going to make this a bit bigger and then if we create a count so if we use in this case i'm just going to use brand and then if i just stick that on there it would do a count and then we can see the majority or the highest amount of mileage brought back is between zero and 1568 and then it starts to peak again when it's between 7925 and we go the way to there so just about 11,000 so about seven and a half thousand to 11,000 the mileage of the car once it's brought back is end up sitting at and we can see there's some cars that have got a lot higher mileage but not as much as the lower mileage cars so and as these are survey results what would be good is to understand what mileage is being given back for the cars where there might be customers who are unhappy or customers who are satisfied so what we can do we can set our net promoter score grouping to to the recommended score so if we just scroll down and find recommended which is there and if we click on the three little dots again and we go new group as i mentioned earlier instead of going to where it says group type and it says bin we now go list and then list allows us to see all the values we're going to group and then we can start grouping them so if we start with nine and ten that's going to be our promoters what you need to do is just highlight the ones you want hold down shift and then do group so we're doing nine and ten and then in here you can double click and then we can start typing in what we want it to be called and then we click out and then we do the next one which is seven and eight and then we group that and then that one's called passives where the other one was called promoters and then the remaining ones we just bring those in 
we are going to call those detractors. Now, once we've got those grouped, you can change the name here if you want to, but I'm just going to leave as it is. And then I'm going to do OK. And then we can see we have our new group and we go into here. We can see it broken down here. And now if we go back and if we would then to drop these into the small multiples, we can now see how that mileage is broken out and we can see the majority which look quite similar to the graph that we saw before we grouped them like this. The majority is kind of in the promoters. We can see there's some passives there and detractors. There's nothing really jumping out that kind of shows you any difference because it seems to be evenly split whatever the mileage is. So we don't think mileage is probably a problem here. So let's say if we wanted to then go, okay, how many minutes is it taking for people to leave their survey results? Now you would think people who are happy are probably going to fill it out quite quickly and people who are not are going to take a bit longer to complete them. So if we were just to go back into where it says minutes and then we do a new group, we're then going to do bins again. And instead of number of bins, we're going to do size of bins. And then we want to do a bin size of every two minutes. So we can set that to two minutes. So if we go two minutes, nothing really changes because it was already kind of set close to that. And it's telling you you've got one that took 0.2 of a minute and then the max some took 45 minutes. They must have not been very pleased. I can probably think that that is not a happy customer if they've spent 45 minutes filling out a survey. Now we have this set again, you can change the name if you want, but not going to in this case, we can just do OK. And now if we were to change where it says check out mileage, Take that one out and then we put in our minute bins we can then see where the majority of the time is taken for the different type of results so as we can see here the longest it's taken someone to do a promoter so that's your score of 9 to 10 is around the 20 minute mark the longest on a passive is around the 30 minute mark and as suspected for the detractor which is the one where the score is between 0 and 6 is the one where they've spent 45 minutes on the survey and you can see the majority they've spent the longer amounts so you can see less than 20 minutes is after that less than 20 minutes is after that and then the longer ones are here so that tells you generally people will take longer to fill out a survey when they're not satisfied and it's because they're probably venting a lot in the comments which then you can do more analysis on but this way you can see you can just do some quick grouping to be able to look at how the data will look. And it's as simple as just setting out your groups. Now, one of the issues you have with the groups are if you go and edit any of them, they are set to what they are. And the only way you can sort of change them is, is if you actually do ungroup and then you have to regroup. So if you want to do any adjustments, you almost have to undo parts and then regroup again, rename. So if you had ones where you had a list of reasons for something and then new reasons come along you needed to add that in a group you would then need to ungroup and then reset your groups all again so say if you didn't want to do that and you just wanted to have something where you can quickly edit and change what you need to you could do that with a switch function which does the same logic that you see there if you're able to look at the backing data that you see on how grouping is created using tablet editor you can actually see ah it's using the switch function so what you can do, because you don't have the ability to see the result here, can't see any DAX, we can then create our own. So if we were just to go new column, and then if we would start to type and call this one recommend, and then we call this one switch, because that's the DAX function we're going to be using. And then what we want to do is just go down and then type in switch, pops up there, and then type in true because what we want this to do is to come back as when we're writing out the actual logic here, the result is true for what we're actually stating within this. So obviously if we want to go, if this equals this, because it's just one big long if function really, but just in a more logical fashion, we want it to come back how we've written the logic. So we want it to be true. So then what we need to do is once we've done that, we just come down and then just tab out once more. And if we do comma, we want to be able to remove any NAs or if there are NAs, we want them to be blank or blanks are actually blanks because otherwise when we do the last part, if it's none of these logics, then be this. We don't want to incorrectly align a group name 
to what is a blank result because there will be people who have actually completed the survey but not actually probably given a score so you don't want to include those so to do that what we need to type in is is blank and then we want to type in our data set and then we want to be able to pick out the actual actually let's do the column name because that'll be easier because they would come up yep to recommend so that's the one we want to use then we do close bracket and then because we want to go is blank we want to go blank so we set that so it comes out as blank so now we've done that one we then want to start writing out the three groups that we're setting which is the promoters the passives and the detractor. So if we do detractors first, because they are six and less, so between zero and six, but because we got rid of the blank, and that's another thing, zero, if you did blank and zero, it sometimes thinks that the zero is a blank and it will incorrectly set it, or your blanks will be seen as zero, so therefore you'd be given a detractor for a blank. So that's why you have to do the is blank first, just to take away those blanks so it doesn't end up falling under detractors. And then in this, we type in the column again. So recommend, and then we do is less than or equal to six, and do a comma, and then we type in quotation marks, detractor, quotation mark again, and then we go down, and then we do another comma, and then we type in recommend again, get that column. And this time we do passives, which are anything from eight to seven. So because we've already taken out the sixes and below, that leaves seven, eight, nine, 10. We do less than and then equal eight, and then comma, and then within quotation marks, we do passives. And then if we go down, oh, we turn, it lets me, there we go. We then go recommend again and then the remaining ones which is 10 and 9 so we just do less than 10 and then do in quotation marks promoters and then close bracket and then just in case any random stuff pops up that isn't numbers or anything like that we want to be able to just make them blank so we just do whatever's left make blank and then if we go down and do close bracket we can see we have the same results down here as we did with the group but all just using the switch function so i hope you found this video useful and if you did please give it a like and subscribe because it helps grow my channel and also if you want to carry on your analytical journey check out these videos over here and as always until next time